Cool shit, man. Let the people know who you are. What's good, what's good. It's your boy Maul, uh, representing Banger Committee out of the production camp. You already know, uh, produce all the songs for them. You know what I'm saying? Specializing in hip hop, trap, pop, R&B, you name it. I do it pretty much. Cool shit. Uh, how long you been? How long you been doing production? Oh man, that's a good question. Uh, I've been music. I've been in music pretty much my whole life. You know what I'm saying? Started with the music programs in school. Um, graduated went to FAMU. Um, I guess right after I graduated FAM, I'll say I say uh, like 2001, 2002 maybe. Okay, okay. So, so you just stood across from that, uh, from that, that southern jukebox before. So, what, you, what you say now? I said you just stood across the field from that southern jukebox before. Oh, <laughs> you already know. I was actually there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually came over there, man, and uh, yeah, we blew y'all out. Oh, what? Uh, <laughs> you got to see me some tape on that one. I don't know. I don't know when that one happened, there. <laughs> oh man. Cool shit. Shit. Uh, as far as like programs, like. Like what's the programs you started out on when you when you started off doing your music? Uh, I think I started out like everybody else, man. I was uh, Fruity Loops pretty much, but I was mm -hmm. using it when Fruity Loops three point one was uh, like when it first started. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of got my foundation there. Then um, I graduated. Then I actually purchased a, a Yamaha Motif. Then I went from there. Then I'm um, actually now I'm back in the box, so I'm using a lot of VSTs, a lot of software, synths, uh, of that nature, you know. Okay, cool shit. So like, uh, what's some joints? What's some joints that that you've been putting out that's bangers that you like people to be checking out for? Uh, well, I'm on the new Slim 400 uh, EP, which is out on iTunes right now. That's our uh, YG's artist. He's doing his thing. Uh, the name of the record is Tell Him Something. Okay. It actually just dropped like two months ago, so that's a real hot record. Um, actually did so I did a record for Plies, the older joint, but it's our uh, first 48. It was on the DJ Screen mixtape. Um, and I got a few other records out there. I did a record for Kid Red, the Snapping Man. That's called uh, Smile for the Camera. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a dope joint. You know what I'm saying? I got some other joints coming down the line. I don't really want to reveal them yet, but I got some special coming for y'all. Cool shit. I mean, is there such thing as your sound? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Um, I guess I have certain elements that I kind of naturally put in certain records, like certain sound effects or whatnot, but I couldn't really say I have a sound. So I've been doing music for so long. I'm really, I've been exposed to so many different genres of music, mm -hmm. jazz, classical, you know, even hip-hop trap, you know what I'm saying? So I basically kind of, I just do whatever I feel at the time, you know what I mean? So I, I couldn't really put my sound into a box. I mean, out of all the different avenues to go into through music, like like what made like hip-hop production, like what made that sing to you? I guess it's my foundation, man. I always, you know, I've been a part of the whole urban environment. I grew up in, you know, in urban communities, you know what I mean? So that was pretty much my upbringing. I listened to a lot of hip-hop and... And, you know, and things like that as a youth, you know, and I'm um, still young, but, you mm -hmm. know, that's pretty much been my whole thing, man, and I just love culture and the art, you know. Again, I started out really doing, like, jazz and classical, right? Um, but, and, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you can't help what you like, you know, mm -hmm. so I've always kind of gravitated to that type, you know, that style of music. Cool shit. Um, are there any other producers that you ever look to as far as, like, like, uh, I don't say like Big Brother type shit. I want to say more in the in the sense of like, like is there anybody who you'd be like, man, I'm shooting at that motherfucker. Like I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to get there. Uh, I really can't say that, man, because um, like I kind of put myself on the same level as these guys. I really don't see anybody really better than me at this point. But okay. if, I, if I was to call it a few people. I really like Mike Wills' production and his whole production camp. Mm -hmm. uh, his drummers, I like those guys a lot. Um, who else I like? Um, I like old, a lot of old Just Blaze type sample. I even like Kanye. I know he's not really produ producing anymore like that anymore, but I like a lot of his stuff too. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty much.
Uh, yeah, man. I mean, I'm pretty sure I left off a few people, but no, you know, I, really, I can't really say I look up to or strive to be you know, at a certain level uh, as far as production wise. I, I think I'm already there, really. Is, is the business end of the music business hard? Like, do you see it as hard? Do I see it as hard? Yeah. to like the any like the building conferences that go on in the area any yeah way? yeah actually I've been to a few um like I, I'm from for a lot of y'all so yeah. um, I'm like 30 minutes north of uh, Miami so they always have uh, music conferences going on so I like to make it as much as I can you know because you never know what you're going to pull out from mm -hmm. these conferences you never know who you're going to meet as well so I'm always trying to go show my face as often as they come down and just network and, you know, learn what I can learn. Cool shit. You be going to strip clubs a lot and shit, man? Nah, man. Not really. I mean, I was working. Like, like I was going to show up here and there, man, but I'm usually working, man. Like, I, like I come home and I'm usually at the lab, either working with artists or just chilling at home. You know, making up, you know, coming, coming up with new hot tracks or whatever. Cool shit. Yeah. So, what's your plan, man? What's, what's, what's your plan? Uh, what's my plan? Yeah. Uh, let's keep pushing, man. And, um, what I realized, like, this past couple of years is, you know, everybody has beats, man. It's like everybody has beats nowadays, so being a producer, I, I mean, it comes down, you know, it comes a dime a dozen, man. So what I've been doing is, is building a lot more relationships with people, you know, and, so I, you know, get my networking game on point. And, um, and I noticed that alone has kind of catapulted me, you know what I'm saying, farther than I even could imagine, man, in a sh very short time. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, the placements that I've got recently, it's because of, it's been because of networking and, you know, meeting people, you know, all over the U.S., you know, through online marketing, uh, social marketing, you know what I'm saying, of that nature. But yeah, man, just continue to build relationships with people and, um, you know, make good music, of course, but yeah, networking, pretty much it. Has it always been just like you and your own motor or like, was there ever a point where like somebody took you under, under their wing and kind of like... Uh, yeah, well, well I, guess, I guess when I first started, you know, I, I was signed to a few labels, independent labels. You know, but they really didn't get me anywhere. They gave me a little exposure and they gave me uh, experience, you know, experience within, mm -hmm. you know, the studio settings and being around engineers and so forth. But mm -hmm. to be honest with you, like all of my major accomplishments has been on my own motor. It's my own personal drive, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, and endeavors. Cool. And then flipping that, like, uh, are you one to take, like, young producers up under your wing and help um, guide them? I, I, Do you see, like, looking at, like, music is ever-changing in a way, you know, uh, like, do you see, like, a next turn in music? That's the thing, man. I, I, you, I can never predict, and I don't think anybody can really predict where music is going, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Uh, like, three years ago, you know, it was that whole... Uh, I'd say, uh, as far as hip hop, you know, Lex Luger was big. Lex Luger, then you had, um, if you other cats, you had that trap sound. Now all of a sudden, the the Migo sound pops up. Then you got the Drake, you know. But so I, I really don't, I can't predict a new sound, mm -hmm. you know, a new turn really. You know, it's all up to the people, in my opinion. You know, I said the masses will let you know that before anything. So I don't think any one producer or whatever can really predict a new change in sound. You know what I'm saying? I think it's like a wave that just comes roughly, you know. Mm-hmm. Let's go, yeah. let's go uh, new year to new year. Like, how did you bring in 2015? Uh, I don't even remember, man. I think oh. I was drunk. <laughs> um, I was definitely in the studio working, man. That was 
sure I was definitely in the studio working, you know what I mean? Just trying to push the envelope, you know. So that's about it. <laughs> All right. So now let's now let's take that let's take that into this next one, man. Like 2016 gonna be here before you know it. So how do you see yourself bringing in this new year? Uh, well, I've been working with some artists, man. So I definitely be pulling my artists to the forefront. Um, now uh, I'm working with some real hot talent. So I'll be kind of branching out of you know just the production, beat making, into pushing these artists to the forefront under my music. You know what I'm saying? So that that should be a, uh, make a huge impact, hopefully. You know what I'm saying? I got some marketing avenues, and my team got a real strong team behind me. I got to give a shout-out to my boy Dylan Cash, by the way. Um, he's been influential and just, you know, helping me out with this whole movement here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, But, yeah, so i say in 2016, just get ready to put some artists on the banking committee, and um, hopefully we're going to make some, uh, make some big moves happen. I mean, you already have them lined up. You can tell us, uh, like, who they are and some things about them, so we can... Yeah, I gotta just give a shout-out to my boy A.G., man, original the general, man. The hottest dude out of Broad County. He's actually a legend down here, so uh, I've been working with him, and uh, he got some crack coming up, man. And uh, that's the only person I'm gonna really let you know right now, but I got a few okay. other people under me. But uh, I'm pushing A.G. right now. He's gonna be the uh, pretty much the front-runner. Oh, that's cool shit. I mean, I mean, for for those of us who not who not from the Florida area, I mean, uh, what make a cat like that a legend in that area? Man, he's got the street cred, man. He's been doing it for a minute. Um, like in my area, man. I mean, you know how you got certain underground legends that people just just know, and you know, you mention his name, you know who he is. He's pretty much him, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as lyricism, he's the god lyrically. You know, very very multifaceted. With styles, but really he can go to trap, to the pop, then just blink of eye. <laughs> you know what I mean? So mm. he just has it, man. He has a juice. Yeah. Like, as you move through it, as we all move through our, our own ventures, you know what I'm saying? We all hit highs and we hit lows. So, I mean, that I imagine, you know. Uh, so if, the, if it's been that way for you, man, tell us some of your highs and lows, some experiences that you could share as a producer as far as victories and losses, you know what I'm saying? So, oh, man, so it's highs and lows, man. That's just, just life, man, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And, you know, if you was on a high all the time, you can't, you know, you can't learn anything, you know what I'm saying? That way, you know, if you never fail, you can't, I don't even think you can see victory, you know what I'm saying, if you're always winning. So I guess um, highs and lows, this this this. Bon Jovi? Bon Jovi, yeah, yeah. Don Bon Jovi. Oh. He's one of the hottest rock stars in the, uh, of our time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so I, I couldn't say that was a really low, but at the time it was a low point for me because 
because, you know, at the time, I'm thinking I'm about to get a deal. I'm thinking, oh, you going to sign me. But right. he basically humbled me, man, and just let me know that, uh, you know, this kid, you got it, but you just kind of have to find yourself. So the next couple of years after that, man, I just kind of, you know, I worked and listened to a lot of industry artists and kind of figured out what that industry sound was. Mm. And from there, man, it was on a profit, man. I started making major placements and, uh, you know, so on and so forth, man. But uh, but the major one of my highs, I guess, is when I got Plies placement. Um, that was like one of my first major placements, man. I got a call from his uh, road manager at the time. I submitted some beats, and he was like, "Hey, man, Plies, uh, he he just dropped a bang off of one of your records, man." And yeah. I didn't believe him. Then the mixtape came out, and sure enough, <laughs> I was on the record. Yeah. No shit, no shit, man. Say what the name of that record is one more time, man. So I uh, you know. First forty eight. Shit. Yeah. Man, you a Heat fan? You already know. All oh. day. All oh, day. How, so how you feel about them not making the playoffs this year? Hey, come on, man. You gotta hit me with that one. Yeah, yeah, I got it, man. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> it is what it is, man. We ain't playing for nothing. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Hey, hey, hey.
people, man. Uh, I got a big event actually over in California that's dropping, man. It's called Summerfest. I was actually a part of that, man. Shout out to my boy Sean Stunner, man. He's over there bringing uh, Ray Schremer, Killing the Miles. It's a big uh, summer festival over there, so I should be flying out there by the end of the month, man, to uh, run up some shoulders. Yeah. yeah. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah. I mean, as far as for yourself, uh, with your personal business, like, do you have, like, what type of marketing plan do you have, like, in store for, for your artists? Uh, for my artists, well, I'm really big on social media marketing, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? For everybody that really comes under me, we have, like, plans for them, so we get that Twitter up, man, make sure they get that Twitter game on point, you know what I'm saying? Instagram, Facebook marketing, you know, it's a lot of low-cost ways, man, that you can make a huge impact. You know, especially if you got good music, you know yeah. what I'm saying, and then you have a good image, you know what I mean? So, definitely, um, I'm real big on that social game. So, yeah, anybody that comes under me, they'll be marketed 100%, with, you know, to the best of my knowledge, and um, we push them hard on social. Mm-hmm. You ever have, like, a dream list? Like, a, a like like when you're doing beats, like, you know, you finish it up, and you, you vibe into it, and you be like, man, I wish... This motherfucker be rapping on this shit. It sound like this motherfucker need to get it. You ever, you ever? Yeah, actually I do, man. Yeah, I, and that's like the first thing I do. Like when I'm when I'm creating my music, mm-hmm. already subconsciously I kind of have a vibe of who I think that should be on it. Yeah. And what I do immediately, I write it down. You know what I mean? Then I figure out how could I get in contact with this person. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be their, their manager, or agent, or so forth. You know? You mm-hmm. know? You know, I, I try my best to really get it to them and try to reach out. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't always prove successful, but at least, you know, it's proactive. You know what I mean? With, uh, on Twitter, you follow the chick Sarah? She is like something like SG, the manager, or something like that? Man, I might. I got so many sure to follow us. I, I, like no. that, and I follow so many people, I just might. You know what I'm saying? Her, I mean, well, check it out if you don't, because she does, a, that's, that's what she does. She does a lot of beat placement. And uh, and if you follow, her, like she'll tell you, like I I didn't seen her like, like you know like like whenever like the last Nas album came out, even though you know it ended up being like basically two producers, you know for the most part, you like she'd be like she she'll be on her Twitter like that. She'd be like, this artist is looking for beats right now. Starts hitting my email up, you know what I'm saying? And she and she, and she be putting it out. She like I just place this producer on this album, you know what I'm saying? So she she keep it uh. She keep it real active, you know. So okay. what's her name again? It's it's her name is Sarah. I want to say something like SJ the manager. Like if you at me, at me in your Twitter, at the magazine in your Twitter, and then uh and then I attach you to her. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like like okay, you, I do that. Yeah, okay. yeah, no doubt. And uh and you'll see, man. She 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 seemed like she be having it popping. You know, so okay. Yeah, I definitely you know slide that jewel on to you. I appreciate that. Oh, okay. and, and man, hey. Hey, I, 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 I don't, I don't never, I, I ain't, I ain't no, no hood or nothing. It don't, it don't help me to, the, you know what I'm saying, to close no gate on nobody. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Shit, I, I don't know which way to go, Charlie. Man, you know it's a lot of police brutality popping off around here in all these places, man. What you, what you think about the, the, the tension going on between these young black men and the police right now? It's crazy, man. Mm-hmm. A long time, but to be honest with you, I'm glad that technology is where it's at right now with these cell phones. Mm-hmm. You know, people can actually record what's going on. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because if we didn't think about it, if we didn't have cell phones, shit would be still going on and they'd be sweeping under the rug. But at least now, mm-hmm. you know, you can't hide from it. You know right. what I'm saying? So now, you know, we're stepping up. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, we got to step up in the right way. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We can't go directly. You know. Shoot the police officer, of course. That is, you know, that is, it put more drama in the streets than in the world. But at mm-hmm. least it's being noticed. I think, you know, um, you know, and the police are actually getting indicted for it now. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. yeah, you know. I always been curious, like, do Fort Dot Lauderdale, like, is it gonna get like real crunk and turned up like once like school let out? I mean, it's always turned up, man. Certain areas, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like down in South Beach, it's big turned up, man. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, pretty much, man. It's gonna get turned up. You know what I'm saying I wouldn't say about Fort Lauderdale per se, 
certain areas in Fort Lauderdale, but I'm so close to Miami. People usually just head down to South Beach and, you know what I'm saying, turn up at KOD, King of Diamonds. I'm pretty sure y'all didn't know about King of Diamonds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah but it's always turned up down here. You know, I, I, I always be wanting to know about other spots because I'll be figuring, like, man, everybody can't fit in fucking King of Diamonds. I, so I'll be yeah, fit. You say, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you also, uh, you do talent management also? No, I don't do talent management, but my partner, Dylan Cash, actually done it, uh, does that, man. Um, we got a, a company outside of band committee called CMG, Colossal Music Group, mm -hmm. where we kind of, we manage artists, and um, we help them out with their marketing as well, uh, graphic design services, print services, the whole nature. So, yeah. As far as, like, banger committee, uh, you have other producers, like, on your production team? You still stay uh like real intertwined with with uh with Florida and them? Uh, not so much, man. You know, I always show support, you know show support when I can. I like I go to the classic, you know what I'm saying, and the games here and that. But you know, you know, it's my university. I always got to support them. You know. Mhm. Mm you Man, you you ever be running into alligators out there? I mean, say what you do, what you doing that happen, man? What you just run? I mean, what, what happened? Nah, man, they kill, man. Like alligators really don't bother you, man. They're real docile creatures, really. Okay. So if you see them, man, they just they just gonna look at you, man. They end up, you know, they'll turn around, go under the water, whatever. But they usually gonna fuck with you. Like, so ultimately, I mean, you, you sound real content, man. You sound real chill and content with with how everything going, man. Like. Do you, and I, I, I would, and don't take it like an you know, insulting way, you know, when I say it like that, but for yourself, how do you define, like me saying it all that, I'm saying you sound real chill, but how do you define, like, inner hunger for yourself? Uh, how did I find, how did I define the hunger? Yeah, yeah, hunger. Like, what's hunger? What's, what's, what's hunger to you? What's hunger for me? This stay, this stay working, man. This stay, mm. you know, never settling for anything. Always striving to do something you never done before. You know mm. what I'm saying? The achieving goals you never, you know, you dress up achieving but never really physically done it. Mm. So that's the hunger for me. You know what I mean? You know, like when I first started, man, I just dreamed about, you know, I just dreamed of getting a major placement for somebody high. But now I got a bunch of major placements. Mm. I'm just like, okay, what's next? <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, so yeah, man, it's always, you know, I always got a hunger, man. It's the With the pri with the um, that's what I was gonna ask, man. It's like when they come to your website and they checking out the beats, they have like prices on the beats and stuff. Yeah, yeah, they, you know, I, I lease a lot of my um, my records on my website. You know, what I'm saying if you want the banger bangers, then you know I kind of email them to you directly. I don't put all my juice on my website, but um, mm -hmm. they can email me directly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I'm not just a regular you know regular artist. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know. Do you ever find like, all right, because like, let's say like I, I was interviewing this one cat and he was like, he ain't never paid for no beats. And he's like, I'm not, he was like, I ain't paying for no beats. He's like, I just beat Jack. And then, and that's going to be it. And he's like, if it blow up, I, I, I'll break the dude off after. Do, do you feel like that's like a, a normal uh, mindset of rappers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wasn't always normal because think about it, we ain't always had the internet. Right. But now with the internet, man, and, and each man beats are so kind of so easy to come across. Mm -hmm. You know, they like it's, it's come become so commodity.
advertise, man, that just like, you know, people just think they can just download it for free. And they don't have, they, they really don't put value on it. Yeah. But the thing is, you know, there's a lot of ignorance on the artist end as well because mm. you just can't take a beat and make money on it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And you never know if, you know, the producer has a copyright, it, then you can be in a lot of trouble. Mm. Like, I copyright all my beats just in case, you know, mm. you know, because you never know. You know what I mean? And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the one waiting on you to try to blow up on my shit. Yeah. <laughs> and get hit with the food, you know, get hit with the food, you know. But, uh, yeah, what it is, man, you know. But the smart artists, man, you know, they always do the right, you know, they always take the right steps and mm-hmm. go through the right channels. And those are the artists that always kind of end up on top anyway, man. You can't get anywhere really trying to get over on people. Right, man. right. They're eventually going to bite you in the ass. No doubt. So right now for yourself, uh... Is there anything that you listening to outside your own music right now? Man, uh, yeah, I listen to everything, man. Uh, I'm listening to a little, little future, man. I listen to, to be honest, I'm 34 years old. I still listen to Ray Schremer, man. I just listen to whatever's hot, man, at the time, <laughs> you know. At the yeah. time, been, you know. Of course, uh, you know, I listen to my own stuff as well, man. But I listen to whatever, man. I try to always keep my ears open. To the streets, man, and you know, and with the masses, like. Mhm. Do you ever feel like, like, you know, at one point people were saying like, like hip hop was dead. Like, do you think like it ever hit like that moment, or you think that that was just like some cliche to see? Uh, I just cliche, man. I mean, you gotta realize music changes, man. I think people hate. Because they, they might get so attached to a certain style of music, and when people don't want to hear it anymore, they make a big fuss about it. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. that's all that is. But music changes over the time, man. You know, that's what life, man. Nothing stays stagnant. The world moves on. Different styles of music, you know, they change, they come and go. You know, it is what it is, man. Do you, do you ever, do you remember like a certain, like, like how you saying how I'd be jumping from spot to spot, and then people have, seem to have a problem with, Moving on to the next thing, was it ever like a moment like that for you? Where it's like you was like, man, I wanted, I, I rather kind of stay right here. Nah, man. Cause I just go to be honest with you, man. I go where the money goes, man. And then <laughs> someone that says, oh, it's not what's popping, I'ma kind of adapt to the change and mm-hmm. make sure my pocket's straight. Right. <laughs> At the end of the day, you know, you know, I could be, you know, you know, I could be real. You know, like, stingy on my own style, like, ah, I'm not gonna ever change this, but, you know, shit, you never get no money like that, man. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta go with the flow, bro. You know what I'm saying? The world's not gonna stop for anybody. Right. But you're not you. Yeah. Cool shit. Cool shit. So, one more time, man. What's, uh, give me, give me your website again, man. Spell it out for me in case they, they can't spell it's good. www.bangercommunity.com. It's spelled B A N G E R C O M M. I-T-T-E-E.com. That's BangerCommittee.com. Oh, and follow me on uh, IG at Banger Committee. Same thing with Twitter at Banger Committee. Mm. And everything Banger Committee. Cool shit, cool shit. Cool shit.